Please give your love and support to Kathy English. I'm at this job interview and I am sweating bullets. Partially because the very conservative scratchy cardigan that I've chosen today is way too hot for this muggy June day. And partially because I am a freshly minted grad student. I am broke and I need money. No one in my field is hiring. The woman from across the table looks up from her laptop and looks at me. So, Miss, Miss English, yes, uh, how do you feel about spanking? <laughs> I pause, answer, and I guess she likes the answer that she hears because we segue on to wholesome snacks and how long nap times should be. And after an impromptu Lego session on the floor, she looks up at me, beams, produces a letter from somewhere and says, Congratulations, Kathy, Catherine, Kathy. We think you would be a great fit for our family to be a nanny for our little Skylar. There's just one thing. Well, my husband and I, well, we're gonna handle certain subjects that come up. You know, the facts of life, the birds and bees, body parts. We, we would prefer to talk about that and not have you cover that. And I froze a bit and went, oh. Well, okay, okay, that makes sense. I mean, you are the, this is mom and dad. They have an educational plan for their kid. And how hard could it possibly be? He's already toilet trained, it's gonna be fine. It'll be super fine. So, I get to work. And Skylar is cool. He's three going on four, and I'm really enjoying the job. He is seeing the world with very fresh eyes, and he is smart, and he is curious. And not a day goes by when he doesn't ask once, twice, 10 times, Kathy, what's that? And I love responding to that. One day we go to the zoo get up bright and early, pack an enormous bag full of sunscreen and snacks and bottled water, anything this we could possibly need on our journey. And we go to the zoo to see all of the animals that he has learned about and is very excited to see. The noonday sun is hot and we uh, scoot on into an indoor enclosure. I'm fishing around in my bag, looking for snacks, looking for something to drink, when I realize that something has gone horribly wrong with my day, because there's some dude behind me who immediately, Whoa! <laughs> oh, damn! I stop, and I look up, and the bronze plaque in front of me says tree kangaroo, and the little critter inside of it is this brown, fuzzy, cute-eyed thing with a boner that's like three quarters the size of its body. <laughs> if this thing was on Tinder, if this thing was on Grindr, its phone would blow up constantly. I was impressed. How is it still conscious and gripping the branch? I don't know. I need to get the hell out of here right now. And Skylar, it's too late. I have my hand on his shoulder. He's already looking up into the cage, makes eye contact with that erection, looks at me. Kathy, what's that? and I panic. I just panic. I can't talk about the boner in the cage. I cannot talk about this zoo dick with this kid. I don't want to be fired. What am I going to do, though? It's really there. I mean, there's just no working around the boner. I, I learned something, though. And I have a solution in my head, because as Skylar has been learning from me, so too I have been learning from him. And selective blindness is huge for a kid who's three going on four. Skylar lost his shoes in front of the door stoop for 45 minutes because he didn't want to leave the house. He didn't see the shoes, I don't see the boner. <laughs> well, well, what are you looking at, honey? What, what, 
What are you, are you looking at his tail? He sort of gives me a little bit of side lie. I've already established that I am, in fact, a dumbass. I failed the Bob the Builder quiz a little earlier today in the car, so he's gonna help me out with some facts, you know? No, it's on his tummy. Well, you mean his little hand that's grabbing the branch? No, it's not that. Well, like his breakfast, his, his paw, is that what you were talking about? Mm. Oh, hey, look, tarantulas. Let's go over there, shall we? And he kind of takes it because spiders are cool in his world. And I breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because I didn't have to mention penis. My job is safe. I have kept to the contract. But almost immediately afterwards, I'm hit by this kind of icky feeling inside of me. And a little voice pops up. Wow. So $14 an hour was all it took to break a promise to myself. Cool. See, my parents were decent folks. They're good people. But they were really, really uncomfortable with a lot of the facts of life, too. And when I had questions, they would often ignore things that were very front and center. And when I was little, it was frustrating and confusing. And when I was older, I kind of hated them for it. And I hated them for it because I knew something was going on and they just wouldn't tell me. And that frustrated me. And I swore I would never do that. I swore when I grow up, I wasn't going to be one of those adults. We're at the art museum. They're having a little Picasso day where kids get to break out the clay and the paints. And we get there super early, so we decide to tour the ground, see the permanent exhibits. We don't get two rooms in where I am eye level to crotch with a gorgeous nude marble statue. Eight inches of meticulously carved, uncut <laughs> grounds for termination are before me. And once again, of course, Skylar being the observant little creature that he is, looks up at this, looks at me, Kathy, what's that? And I, I go back to my norm thing, but he is prepared this time. I am obviously really slow on the draw, so he's gonna help me out with this one. <laughs> Kathy, his penis does not look like my penis. <laughs> why does his penis not look like my penis? What, 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 why is it different, Kathy? I continue with this. Well, I don't know what you're looking at, honey. I let the selective blindness take over, add a little selective deafness to. Are you talking about his thumb? Like, like the one or, uh, no, I am not talking about his thumb, Kathy. Are, are you talking about what, like his hair? N no, Kathy, I am not talking about his hair. I am talking about his penis. <laughs> oh, hey, look, it's time for your class. Let's go, let's go. <sighs> And I can feel his frustration. And he's easily distracted because he's a little like that. A new day comes, and we're off to the YMCA. Skylar loves swimming. He's an active kid. This is a great way to burn off energy. So we head off. But at three going at, uh, on four, he needs help in the locker room. So we both scoot on in into the ladies' locker room. I get him dressed in his swim trunks, and I begin to sort of dress myself. Little bit of TMI. At this point in time, both of my nipples are double pierced. Not that she would know this, looking at me, you know, just walking around. Because part of the whole nanny shtick is, is that you hide all the details humanly possible, and most of those little things are buried underneath layers of cardigan and very sturdy bras and stuff like that. So, you know, no details whatsoever, as well as bra Barbie doll as I could possibly make myself. But with all those layers kind of coming off, all kinds of new details are now part of Skylar's world. And as I remove my shirt, a pair of little eyes is looking up at me, locks eyes with one of my piercings, and says, Kathy, what's that? 
and he's pointing at my piercing. And I wasn't prepared to police my own body in front of this kid. So with one hand, I sort of get, get some distance between us, and with the other hand, I'm yanking my bikini top with one not doing a particularly good job of it. I don't know what you're talking about, honey. What does it look like? Is it my necklace? And he's just done with my shit. I can see it on his face. Because he looks at me, looks at my piercing, looks back at me again, and screams, I was talking about your areola! <laughs> Who the fuck taught him that word? <laughs> I didn't! God, I hope it was the parents, because if God came from the, the kids he has playdates with, I, how am I going to explain this? This could get me fired. I, everyone in this locker room is staring at me. I can feel the shame, the red spreading from my cheeks, down my neck, sky, by the hand, let's go swimming! Let's go swimming, yes! And the cool chlorinated water helps with the flush. But... After that, nothing was the same. Because while I knew it all along, this was the moment where Skylar kind of figured it out. I was one of those adults. You know, ones you can't talk to about stuff, who aren't gonna answer your questions with a real answer. And I stopped hearing, Kathy, what's that? a lot of the time. A little less than a year later, I uh, left that position. Like a lot of nannies, I left because there were better opportunities, better pay, things that I really wanted to do with my life. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that part of the reason I left wasn't because I wasn't being true to the kind of adult I wanted to be. These days, I don't have kids, not yet anyway, but a lot of my friends are bringing little humans into this world, curious souls that want to know things about this world. And after having lots and lots of really in-depth conversations with these folks about how they want their kids raised and what kind of communities is going to support them, I know that when we go out into the world and I'm with these kids and we're at the zoo, when one of them looks into a cage, looks up at me and goes, Miss Kathy, what's that? I can respond like the kind of adult I want to be, with an age-appropriate, stage-appropriate response of, well, honey, that's a penis.